Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening in the Russian economy. On Friday the 27th of October, the Russian central bank increased interest rates to take the official rate of interest to 15%, which means that over the course of the last three months, interest rates in Russia have doubled from 7.5%, which is a very high rate in itself, to the current level of 15%. And that means that the only two countries in the G20 that now have a higher rate of interest than Russia are Turkey and Argentina, whose economies are both in a complete state of crisis. Now, the Russian central bank has identified inflation as being the main reason why they're having to keep increasing interest rates. But the current rate of inflation in Russia is only sitting at 6%, compared with Russia's target rate of 4%. So it's not a million miles away. So the story about increasing interest rates to try to stay on top of inflation doesn't really stack up given the data that we've got. And this tells us that either the inflation figures that Russia is publishing officially, the 6% level, isn't reflecting the real rate of inflation, or Russia is increasing its interest rates for another reason, such as supporting the value of the ruble. And if you've been following the channel, you'll know that over the course of the last couple of months, the value of the ruble has been under severe pressure. And as a result of that, President Putin instructed the Russian central bank to do something about it. They called an emergency meeting and increased the interest rate by 3.5% to 12%, which did have a short-term benefit in terms of the value of the ruble. However, it then started to drift again. And as a result of that, there have now been capital controls that have been brought in to restrict the amount of trading that Russian exporters are allowed to do with foreign currency. So in today's video, I want to dig down into what's actually going on in the Russian economy and what's driving these increase in interest rates. So we'll have a look at the latest announcements from the Bank of Russia and look at exactly what's been happening to interest rates and inflation. And we'll compare it to what's going on in other countries to see whether or not the approach currently being taken by Russia is in line with what's happening elsewhere. We'll also have a look at what's happening currently with the value of the ruble. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is actually going on in the Russian economy and what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's bought me a coffee or sent me a super thanks. Really, really appreciate that. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below. We all find links to my Patreon channel where you can get early access to videos and avoid all of the adverts that you get on YouTube. But if you don't like Patreon and you'd like to support the channel, you'll also see that there's links to buy me a coffee as well as YouTube super thanks and membership scheme. The Bank of Russia surprised the markets by hiking interest rates by a higher than expected 200 basis points or 2% to the current rate of 15% on the 27th of October. And this means that the Russian central bank have now raised borrowing costs for the fourth time in the last three months. An official statement released by the Bank of Russia said current inflationary pressures have significantly increased to a level above the Bank of Russia's expectations which indicates that domestic demand is outpacing the provision of goods and services and high lending growth. The Bank of Russia's governor, Elvira Nabalina, said the bank had also considered hiking by 100 or 150 basis points and said that the rate could be held or raised again further this year. The next scheduled meeting to discuss interest rates is on the 15th of December. Nabalina also said that the Russian budget was a significant factor in the interest rate decision. The updated budget for 2024 published by Russia revealed an increase in government spending which is pouring cash into the defence sector to ramp up military production to support the special military operation in Ukraine. The updated medium-term parameters of fiscal policy assume a slower-than-expected decline in fiscal stimulus in the years ahead. The bank also acknowledged for the first time that it may not succeed in returning inflation to its 4% target next year, forecasting year-end inflation for 2024 at between 4 and 4.5%. 4 the Russian Central Bank also said that inflation would range from between 7 to 7.5% 7 by the end of 2023, against its original forecast of between 6 and 7%. The bank has maintained its hawkish stance, stating that tight monetary conditions would be maintained for a long period, but has withdrawn guidance that it would study the need for further hikes, with Nabalina describing this signal as neutral. However, the bank has set its 2023 interest rate target range at between 15 and 15.2%, 15 which suggests that rates could climb further. At recent meetings, we raised the key rate by tangible steps and will be ready to do this again 
if we do not see signs of a sustainable slowdown in inflation and a cooling of inflation expectations, Nabilina said. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of interest in Russia over the last 12 months. And as you can see from the right hand side of this chart, there have been four interest rate increases in the last three months. And the official rate of interest has increased from 7.5% at the start of July to 15% today, which means that the base cost of borrowing has doubled in the last three months. And if we expand the scale of this chart back to the start of 2022, which was before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it shows that the official rate of interest at the start of 22 was 7.75%. However, in order to tackle the impact of the war on the Russian economy, the Russian Central Bank increased interest rates to 20% on the 8th of April 2022. However, bizarrely, three weeks later, on the 29th of April, they reduced the rate back down to 17%. It was then reduced further on the 26th of May to 14%, taken down to 11% on the 10th of June, 9.5% on the 22nd of July, 8% on the 16th of October and dropped to 7.5% on the 28th of October 2022. So within a six month period, the interest rate moved from 7.75% to 20% and then rapidly back down to 7.5%, which is actually lower than the rate of interest was before the war started. And it remained at 7.5% until the 21st of July this year, when it was increased to 8.5%. The official rate was then increased to 12% on the 15th of August, after President Putin instructed the Russian Central Bank to organise an emergency meeting to sort out the problems with the ruble, which at that point was trading for more than 100 against the US dollar. The rate was increased by a further 1% on the 15th of September to 13%, and on the 27th of October it was increased by a further 2% to 15%. And in order to put the current rate of interest into context, this chart shows the rate of interest over the last five years. And you can see that the only other time that rates have been at 15% in the last five years were at the extraordinary time following Russia's invasion of Ukraine that we just talked about. If we expand the chart further to show the last 10 years, you can see that the only other time that rates have been at this level were at the end of 2014 and the start of 2015, following Russia's annexation of the Crimea region of Ukraine. And if we expand the chart out to show the last 25 years, you can see that the only other two occasions when interest rates have been this high were those two war-affected events we've just talked about. So the Russian Central Bank has stated that the reason for the increase in interest rates is to calm inflation, which it's now very concerned about. And this chart shows the movement in the rate of inflation in Russia over the last five years. And the reason that I wanted to go back five years in this chart is to compare what happened at the start of the war in Ukraine and what's happening now. If we start off by looking at the situation at the start of 2022, you can see that the rate of inflation in Russia was running at around 8.5%. However, immediately following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which started on the 24th of February 2022, inflation increased dramatically and hit a peak of around 18% shortly after the start of the war. However, as you can see from the shape of this chart, inflation fell rapidly throughout the rest of 2022. And by October 2022, inflation was down to 12.6%. And as you can see from this 12-month bar chart, between October 22 and February 23, inflation reduced in every single month, and by February it was down to 11%. We then saw a remarkable reduction in inflation in March, when it fell to 3.5%, and in April, it fell further to 2.3%. Now, this is a really interesting development because as we just discussed with regards to interest rates, during that period, interest rates remained flat at 7.5%. Traditional economic theory tells us that you should be increasing interest rates to discourage people from taking on more debt. That generally leads to a reduction in demand and therefore a reduction in prices. However, throughout this six-month period of reducing inflation, Russia's interest rates remained entirely flat. So the big question is, what was driving the reduction in prices in Russia during that period? Because it definitely wasn't interest rates. If we now look at what's happened over the last five months, inflation increased slightly in May to 2.5%. However, at that stage, Russia still had one of the lowest rates of inflation out of every country in the world. So inflation certainly wasn't an issue in May. In June, it increased to 3.3%, which is still below the target rate of 4% in Russia and was still one of the lowest rates in the world at that point. 
So once again, inflation shouldn't have been a concern from Russia's perspective. In July, there was a further 1% increase in inflation to 4.3%, but that's still broadly in line with Russia's target rate. However, in that month, there was an increase in interest rates. In August, inflation increased to 5.2%, and that was the month when the 3.5% increase in interest rates was introduced as a result of President Putin telling the Russian central bank that it needed to do something to sort out the problem with the ruble. And in September, inflation increased to 6%. So over the last five months, there has clearly been a trend for increasing inflation in Russia, but the rate of increase has been relatively slow and doesn't appear to merit any emergency action in terms of interest rates. Now, as you'll know if you follow the channel, I always like to have a look at what's going on with food inflation because that's quite an important metric because the poorest members of society spend a much larger percentage of their budget on food. And so when food prices start to increase rapidly, it can cause major problems in terms of people simply not being able to afford enough food. However, as you can see from this chart, which shows the movement in food inflation over the last 12 months, the rate of price increases for food has actually been running at a lower level than it has for general prices. And if you look at the rates for the last six months, in April and May, food prices actually reduced year on year. In June, there was a 0.2% increase. There was a 2.2% increase in July, 3.6% in August and 4.9% in September. And what these figures tell us is that there was certainly no need for emergency interest rate increases in Russia as a result of the increased price of food. Now, I wanted to put the current rate of inflation in Russia into perspective to see just how serious the situation is, because the Bank of Russia is saying that it needs to keep increasing interest rates to address the problems with inflation. This chart shows the current rates of inflation for the G20, which historically were the 20 largest economies in the world. And what this shows is that currently the two countries with the highest rates of inflation in the G20 are Argentina, where inflation is running at 138%, and Turkey, where it's running at just under 62%. And I would classify both of those levels of inflation as being unsustainable, off the scale, unmanageable and definitely merit some form of emergency action in terms of addressing what's happening in those economies. The country with the next highest rate of inflation is the United Kingdom at 6.7%. Russia is sitting at number four on this list with a rate of 6%, followed by Australia and South Africa, both of which have inflation of 5.4%, Italy at 5.3%, Brazil at 5.2% and India at 5%. So in terms of problematic inflation, let's have a quick look at what the current rate of interest is in the United Kingdom, which has a higher rate of inflation than Russia. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of interest in the UK since the start of 2022. And as you can see, during this period, there have been 13 consecutive interest rate increases to the current level of 5.25%, which means that the official rate of interest in the UK is almost 10% lower than Russia's current rate of 15%. And if we expand the interest rate chart for the UK to show the last 50 years, you can see that the last time the interest rates were at 15% in the UK was in 1990, which was as a direct result of the major recession at the end of the 1980s. And this chart compares the current interest rates for the G20. And as you can see, Russia at 15% is the third highest rate of interest. And the only two countries that have higher rates are Turkey at 35%, and Argentina at 133%, which is completely off the scale. And if we compare Russia's current rate with all of the countries in the world, Russia currently has the 21st highest rate of interest out of every country in the world. And to put that into perspective, this chart shows the inflation rate for every country in the world. And Russia's current inflation rate of 6% ranks it as the country with the 70th highest rate in the world. So there are 69 countries that have higher rates of inflation currently, but there are only 20 countries that have higher interest rates. And what this analysis indicates is that either the official rate of inflation in Russia is understated, Russia are not declaring the full amount of the inflation, or they're taking an overly aggressive approach in terms of interest rate increases for other reasons, such as supporting the value of the ruble. This chart shows the movement in the official exchange rate between the US dollar and the Russian ruble over the last 12 months. This time 12 months ago, one US dollar was trading for around 60 Russian rubles. Today, it's trading for around 94, which represents a fall in value of over 50%. And if we change the scale of this chart to show what's been happening over the last six months, there have been two major periods of concern from President Putin's point of view. 
The first of these was at the start of August, when the value of the ruble fell below 100 to 1 US dollar. And as a result of that, President Putin instructed the Russian central bank to do something about it. They increased interest rates by 3.5%, and that led to a short-term recovery in the value of the ruble, which was then trading at around 95 to 1 US dollar. However, over the course of the following month, the value of the ruble started to deteriorate again. The Russian central bank then increased interest rates by a further 1% on the 15th of September. However, that didn't have a major beneficial impact on the value of the ruble, and by the start of October, the exchange rate had once again fallen below 100 against the US dollar. And as a direct result, President Putin announced the reinstatement of capital controls in Russia. And under the terms of a new decree that was issued, some of the largest exporting companies in Russia were instructed that they had to deposit at least 80% of all of their foreign currency earnings into Russian banks and then convert 90% of those holdings into Russian rubles. And this move was designed to increase the demand for rubles and therefore bring the price back up. And as you can see from this chart, it has had the desired effect, but only to a very limited extent. When you take a step back and look at the value of the ruble over the last 12 months, the current rate of 94 to 1 US dollar is still significantly lower than where Russia was trading 12 months ago. So despite the heavy efforts of the Russian central bank, where they're rapidly increasing interest rates and also restricting what companies in Russia are able to do with foreign currency, it's only having a very small positive impact on the ruble. And without these controls and high rates of interest, it's very likely that the value of the ruble would be trading above 100 and the actual rate could be significantly above 100 without this market manipulation. And of course, the underlying reason why the value of the ruble has fallen so much over the last 12 months is because of what's happening in the Russian economy. Traditional economic theory tells us that the strength of a currency is linked to the strength of an economy. If your economy is doing badly, there will be less demand for your goods. Therefore, there will be less demand for your currency. And currency, like most markets, is based on supply and demand. So when demand falls for your currency, so does the price. And that's exactly what's been happening to the Russian ruble over the course of the last 12 months. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video firstly to let you know exactly what's been happening with the rate of interest in Russia. We've seen another increase. And over the course of the last three months, interest rates have now increased from 7.5% to 15%. And this represents really emergency action. It's not quite as drastic as the emergency action that Russia took immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, when interest rates were increased to 20%. But it's not actually that far away. And this course of action is far more extreme than we've seen in every other country around the world. Throughout the whole of 2022, inflation was the number one topic and the major thing that most economies were focused in on bringing down. And the way that that was handled was by increasing interest rates. But the vast majority of countries decided to do that incrementally. So we saw increases of 0.25% or maybe 0.5%. In some situations, we saw 0.75%, but that was seen as being very, very aggressive. And the reason that it was done incrementally was twofold. Firstly, the central banks didn't want to cause a shock in their economies by hiking interest rates by 2 or 3 or 4%. But also, it takes time for the increase in interest rates to feed through into the economy because it's only when you start getting your statements, maybe a month or two months later, which show that your debt has gone up in price and therefore you're now paying a higher amount, that you start to think about adjusting your budget. So generally speaking, a large overnight increase in interest rates isn't good news for your economy. But we've now seen Russia do exactly that on two separate occasions over the last two years. The first one was at the start of the war when it increased interest rates by 12.25%, which is massive. And the second was in August when it increased rates by 3.5%. But in addition to that 3.5% increase, Russia has also added on another 4% to increase rates in total by 7.5%. And the most recent increase of 2% does seem quite puzzling because when you look at the current rate of inflation of 6%, it's not a million miles away from where Russia wants it to be. You would expect that 6% compared with the target rate of 4% would be broadly acceptable given the fact that Russia is currently involved in an active war and has a massive amount of sanctions applied against it. 
And as we talked about earlier in the video, inflation in Russia is actually lower than it is in the United Kingdom right now, where the official rate of interest is 5.25%, which is almost three times less than the current rate in Russia. And in terms of looking at Russia in a global context, the current rate of interest is the 21st highest in the world, but the current rate of inflation is the 70th highest, which tells us that maybe it isn't inflation that's driving what's happening with interest rates, and it's more likely to be what's happening with the ruble. As we saw from the analysis, the value of the ruble has increased slightly, following the introduction of the capital controls that President Putin brought in, and also the 7.5% increase in interest rates. However, the value of the ruble is still significantly lower than it was this time last year. And I think what we're seeing is that the Russian central bank is currently swimming against a very fast moving tide. And without these increases in interest rates, it's likely that the value of the ruble would already be below 100 and possibly as high as 110 or 120 against the US dollar. And that wouldn't be an acceptable situation from President Putin's point of view. As we've discussed lots of times before, the value of your currency is directly linked to what's happening in your economy. So if your currency is in the toilet, that tells everybody in the world that there are major problems with your economy. And of course, that story doesn't match up with what Russia is saying is happening in its economy. The official line from Russia is that the sanctions are having limited impact, that they've managed to increase all of their trade with countries like India and China very successfully, and everything is carrying on as normal. But the data throws a huge question mark over that story because interest rates in Russia are rising at the fastest rate of any country in the world, despite the fact that inflation is only sitting at 6%, which is only 2% above Russia's long-term target. So in terms of what's going on with interest rates and inflation, it's telling us a different story. And if you look at what's happening in terms of the Russian economy, oil and gas revenues are down year on year against where Russia was this time last year, but they are down significantly against the figures for 2021, which was the last year that was completely unaffected by what's happening in Ukraine. So Russia has lost a huge amount of revenue and it's also spending a lot more because it's investing heavily into the war in Ukraine. And both of those factors have resulted in Russia posting huge deficits. And the overall impact of all of this is that it's dragging down the value of the ruble. So the bottom line here is that what's happening in the Russian economy is driving all of these problems and resulting in the economic policies that are being implemented by the Russian central bank. So the overall summary of today's video is that over the last three months, interest rates have doubled in Russia from 7.5% to 15%, giving Russia the 21st highest rate of interest in the world at a time when its inflation is only sitting at 6%, which tells us that the reasons for these increases in interest rates isn't inflation and is down to the other problems that are happening in the Russian economy. So hopefully you found today's episode useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.